Hello users, and welcome to another episodic installation of Above It All. And there was a fatal police shooting in Washington, D.C. yesterday, and protests gathered over the course of the entire evening outside of the 7th Metropolitan Dis Police uh, Department. Um, they released body camera footage just a couple hours ago. Um, but I want to show some video. I want to show some photos of last night's protest. And there's probably going to be a lot more. Um, but uh, I want to play the video here uh, in full. Um, well, not in full, because there's a lot of filler, but it, there's, it's really bizarre. It, it, it <laughs> This is the community briefing involving the fatal shooting of Mr. Dion K involving a uniformed police officer really on loud. Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020 in the 200 block of Orange Street Southeast. All viewers should be aware that this contains graphic content of a fatal shooting. The Metropolitan Police Department's model use of force policy and training emphasize de-escalation, proportionality, and reasonableness. Above now, all, now I want to real quick mention that the mayor of Washington D.C. endorsed Bloomberg. Did the whole "we're going to paint paint Black Lives Matter" on the street, and then gave more funding to police. And the new police chief that I believe has been there for a couple months or so um, was very heavily criticized for their history. And so this is one of those situations that, uh, again, it's just, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. So uh, MPD recognizes the sanctity of human life. And that any loss of life is a tragic outcome for a family. And this, this, like, we recognize the same. No, you, no. Community. Come on. Since December 2016, all patrol officers are required to wear body-worn cameras. On Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020, at approximately 3.49 p.m., uniformed MPD officers were in the area of the 200 block of Orange Street Southeast to investigate a man with a gun. Upon arrival, the officers approached individuals in a parked vehicle. Mr. Dion K. exited the vehicle and began to run on foot. Officers pursued Mr. K. on foot. An officer observed Mr. K. brandish a firearm, and subsequently the officer discharged his service weapon once, striking Mr. K. in the chest. So, real quick, it was initially, initially speculated that he was shot in the back, but what seems to happen here is the police officer runs ahead of him, turns around, and shoots him. And the thing about this that's bizarre is Dion had a gun and was throwing it. And somehow, like, somehow the gun landed, like, really far away. And, like, they didn't, like, when someone's, in like, going to throw a weapon, right, like, it's a completely different position from a firing position. And so like, it's just, this is a really bizarre setup here. But as you can see, the police come in and the sound will be on momentarily. Don't move! Don't move, don't move, don't move! So he had a gun, but is that a death sentence? Right? Not to my knowledge. And so if he was throwing it real quick, this this part, this whole part is just kind of embarrassing. Um, but right here they do a slow motion recap. I don't know. Um, and this is when the part the that's super interesting. Slow motion, you can see Mr. K brandish a firearm in his right hand. Now, as you can see right before this, he's starting to begin an underhanded toss and that's very Brought visible slow motion you can see mr k brandish a firearm in his and they call it brandish like 
his finger is not on the trigger, right? It's not brandishing a firearm. He's clearly throwing it in the distance. And yet the officer did not care about that and decided to shoot instantaneously. Right hand. Like... Mr. K's handgun was recovered by the department. Like, again, none of this matters because it doesn't warrant a death sentence. Should he have had guns? Probably not, right? But, like, does it matter at this point? He's dead. It doesn't matter. So the idea here, and the thing about this, this is that is a lot worse than what I predicted as of last night's protests before we got this body camera footage, um, is that he's very clearly throwing it, and for it to land in the grass, the officer had to have shot him after he threw it. So again, this all happens really quickly here. But I want to show this again. And I want to put this on a quarter speed. Like, for it to have landed in the grass, he needed to have thrown it before being shot. Which makes the shooting even more bizarre. So as you can see, he throws it there and then gets shot. So the whole idea... Of them saying he brandished a weapon when that is clearly not what happened is bizarre. And the rest of this video is them looking for the gun. So again, it's just bizarre. Like, but the, the thing here that I want to talk about is kind of like a, a thing that, that is important here to understand is that Police are not trained to de-escalate. It says right here, right? The Metropolitan Police Department's model use of force policy and training emphasizes de-escalation. Where was the de-escalation? He got out of his car and killed someone within 10 seconds. Let's count, actually. Let's count. Right, okay. So out of the car, 124. Okay? Literally, within five, six maybe seconds, he gets out of the car and kills someone, shoots him after he fire, or he throws a firearm. It's it, uh, like... Like, the idea if you see a gun, are you trained to instantly kill and aim for the chest? Like, that doesn't make any sense. That Like, it, it's bizarre. And the, the whole thing here is that the, the police department in D.C. is especially bad. If you've been to any protests in D.C., which I have, I used to live there, you would know the police are not great. They're really, really bad. And so this idea of you see a gun, you shoot to kill instantly, is just, it's horrifying. Especially when it's very clear that Dion was throwing the weapon. And they say at the end, like, even though that's very clear, all you have to do is slow it down a little bit. They have the audacity to say brandish here. And so I want to look up the definition of brandish real quick. Wave or flourish as something, especially a weapon, as a threat or an anger or excitement. How is that brandishing? Like, it, it, waving? I guess if throwing something is waving it. Like, if you were to do this, right? That would be brandishing, I guess. But, like, someone going like this and throwing something. That's not brandishing. But, again, this is not great because this is in D.C. The D.C. protests have been escalating for the last three months. And this is what, like, there's so many, like, every week... It happens over and over again. So it's just... Uh, I'm at a loss for words. And that's why I, I'm making this video. And it's it's I'm sounding like I've got nothing to say. Because I'm at a loss for words. Because these are just situations where... Yeah, you can analyze them individually. And you can do this whole blah, blah, blah. But it's like... 
they, it keeps happening every single week. People are being shot and killed. Like just a few days ago, someone was killed in LA, right? People like like uh, Jacob Blake was shot in Wisconsin a couple like like a week ago now, right? Like this just keeps happening over and over and over again. And yet, for some, I feel like we're we're stuck in a time loop. Nothing is happening. There are protests every single day in all these major cities. Right wingers are saying the same thing every single day. Oh, 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 making excuses, one more detail every single time. And police are just making excuses over and over and over again, and nothing's happening. It's just like I feel like we're in the twilight zone here. And and like no, like these cops are just they're on edge. Like they're do you think? Oh, I'm a cop. I should really be on my best behavior, right? But now they're on edge and they're shooting people more. Like like the, the, the influx of violence from the police is happening at a, an accelerating pace where every single day there's more and more police violence. And it's just like, there is a civil war happening. It's the police versus, versus the citizens. Tyranny has come to our front doorstep. That's what this is. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. And and the idea that they're trying to paint this as some sort of, oh, brandishing a firearm when he was literally throwing it. And as you saw, when I slowed it down, threw it before being shot. Now, again, it was a very short circumstance. But maybe if this cop didn't shoot instantly, Dion would still be alive. And so... I, how many more times are we gonna have to do this? I, I'm at my I'm at my wits end here, <laughs> seriously. And it's it's, I don't know. But either way, thank you for watching. If you live in the area, you know, I mean, try to protest. Ah, uh? I mean, yeah, nothing's happening. But when you protest, you build community strength. You organize with the people that care about the same things that you care about, and those bonds that are created. Those are going to be what brings us in to the next decade. Those are like when, when we have this empire collapse, right? We're going to need those community connections and we're going to need to build community strength and solidarity to get through these troubling times. We cannot continue to be atomized. We have to organize and we have to strategize and we have to find ways to stop this from happening in the future. And I don't know what those solutions are. And that's why we need to get out and talk to each other. But like this is just some I like, uh, there's really no defense for this. Like the the best defense oh he had a gun. And like is that a death sentence? Was the gun being pointed at him? Did he have his finger on the trigger? The answer to all of that is no. So what happened to due process? Anyway. I'm sorry, but this is, uh, I don't know. I'm just sick of this.